Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to my first ever Dark Souls board game video. This is going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I've no idea how it's going to go. Probably going to die horribly at least once. So I've assembled a whole load of cards and stuff, started setting up the board. This is going to be a solo playthrough, and I'm actually going to launch straight into the campaign. Now, because it's a solo playthrough, the knight will gain 16 souls to spend. Because it's pretty damn hard for a single character. To start with, we're going through something similar to the Undead Burg. A bunch of horrible, run-down ruins. And at the end, we're going to have to face not one, but two rather horrific gargoyles. And then, ring a bell. Yes. Ah, here is our brave knight. And he will be venturing forth on this quest. He should have a bold name, a brave name, a heroic name that can be remembered for years to come. Or simply fade into obscurity like so many fallen heroes who have failed and become hollow over the years. So for a gargoyle, we have his behavioural deck, we have his basic stat card, they're going to be just put, I don't know, over here for now. I need to build the gargoyle deck, don't I? And one of these is the heat up, right, where's his heat up cards? I should know this. See, this is the joy I have of not having played before, but there is some deck assembly to be done that I didn't want to do off camera because you get to all see how incredibly rubbish I am at shuffling cards. But, more importantly, you can't claim it was a setup. So, this is probably going to be a right old disaster already. Uh, heat up is... oh, that's... Okay, let's see. His deck should consist of four cards. That's that sorted out now. So, out of these five cards, one will not be in the Gargoyle's deck. Let's take this one out. I have no idea what it is. Well, I'm sure I'll find out what the others are. So this is his behaviour cue. It will remain the same. It is predictable once you learn it. Which is similar to trying to learn how to deal with the Dark Souls bosses and how they behave. What if I to turn the light on? Is it very gloomy? It doesn't look too gloomy. And then one of these three Heat Up cards will go in there at some point. Now of course the gargoyle lurks beyond the fog door. Now here at the Firelink Shrine we have a number of facilities available to us but first off we have a treasure deck to build which is basically going to be all these cards shuffled in together. Now, I have removed the cards from other classes, I've removed the cards for the empowered, uh, enhanced, whatever they're called, items. And I will shuffle badly. Look at me, look at me, incredibly terrible shuffling powers here. Yeah, my, my idea of shuffling is basically like picking up some cards and putting them somewhere else in the deck. And I'm not very good at it. So anyway, this wonderful deck can go... where are we? There's a special space for it. Here, on this mighty treasure chest. So this space is for the treasure chest. This space is for items that have been acquired. Here we have Andre of Astora, the blacksmith. We have a firekeeper. We have a, a pool full of souls drifting. They seem to be swooshing about a little bit like tadpoles. And for these spaces, these adjacent areas, we need some encounters. So, level 1 encounters, I just rubbish it shuffling, and of course because I'm doing a campaign, it's one card, one, one, 
and a level 2 encounter. Now one of these cards has got a, a slight scuff on its back, so I just need to ignore that. It arrived that way. Not a lot I can do about it. I'll probably eventually get familiar with the card. But for now, it is what it is. So we have our encounter cards there. Our gargoyle treasure cards here. We have our dice here, which are blue, green, black and orange. I don't know why I called the orange ones red in the first video I did. Ah, uh, must have just been over excitement, I suppose. So, our knight needs a name. Let's call him Sir Keriad Palmorion, a valiant knight indeed. Now, Sir Keriad Palmorion could just head off through the level 2 encounter straight through the fog door, but he wants to prepare, you know? Oh, and there's even some wonderful boxed text to read that isn't even in a box. Of course, why not <laughs> give you a more full experience? Let's see. Although it is but your first journey, the path of the chosen undead is a most treacherous one, by no means simple. It will take you through the ruined streets and haunted watchtowers of an undead bird over the old stone bridge to Sen's fortress, and finally to the magnificent city of Anor Londo, seat of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. This will not be an uneasy... <laughs> this will not be an easy undertaking, like was that sentence. This will not be an easy undertaking, and enemies will befall you at every step of the way. From your first moments inside the undead burg, you will be assailed by ranks of hollowed soldiers and mindless zombies, and your only reward for defeating them will be to face the gargoyles that stand vigil over the next destination of your path. If you prevail, you will find that the same is also true of Sen's Fortress, the ancient proving grounds of the gods, where mighty titanite demons roam endlessly amongst numerous traps and pitfalls. Finally, if you should survive to reach Anor Londo, you must prepare to, for battle as never before. Awaiting you there are two of the mightiest opponents you ever might face. Dragon Slayer Ornstein and Executioner Smaul. This will be your final challenge, but it will not be one you shall relish, for many chosen undead before you have fallen to them. Alright, well... This is going to get pretty rough, isn't it? So, because it's the campaign, all of the Phylic Shrine costs are doubled. So, let me just check campaign rules again, just to make sure I'm getting this right. It is... 4, 8, 16... Um, and 2. So, Sir Carriad will begin by purchasing an item from Andre the Gi Giant Blacksmith. <laughs> it's easier to Andre the Giant, isn't it? Uh, this will cost two souls. And I'm sure I'm going to make a hell of a lot of mistakes here over the course of this playthrough, but it's my first time, right? And I just thought, share it with you guys, have some fun together. And the item is... Ah, short sword. Not brilliant. Let's have another item. Because the knight sword already is somewhat superior to that. This second item is the great two-handed axe. Actually, that's quite impressive, but it can't be used with a shield, and... We don't want our knight to perish. Now time is running a little low, so I'll be ending this video soon and looping on to another one, but that's all well and good. Uh, two more... let's... yeah. Let's have one more item of treasure. Black armor. You know... That's a about the same as the knight's armour. It would require a lot of dexterity and intelligence. And it would... It, no, no. It's about the same for blocking and... It's got 
a bit of good dodgeability there, some magic resistance. And what is that number now? What is that? Ah, upgrade slots. It can be upgraded twice. So actually, that's quite a good set of armour. It's, uh... Hmm. It may then be worth... Let's see, four, eight, six... Oh, that's a lot of... That's a lot of upgrading to do. To be able to use it, though. Hmm. And with that, to ponder, I'll end the recording here and pick up next time.